Welcome to the Life Success and Legacy Podcast. We're glad you're here, and we hope you enjoy the episode. Hey, good morning, everybody. At least it's morning now when we're recording. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> uh, welcome back to our next edition of the Life Success Legacy Podcast. Um, we are all riding high uh, after the weekend. Um, but also a little uh, fatigued. At least I am. I don't know about mm. you guys, but it takes yeah. me a little bit to recover. How about that live boot camp down in Houston, Texas? Man, oh man. Super fun. Shout out to uh, Mike and Pay um, for hosting the event. We had, what, about 50, 60 people joined us. Just short of 60, I'm telling yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah, in fact, we about ran out of food, Everett. There was like half a sandwich <laughs> left that I got. Well, I I, I, I told you I, I I ordered food for sixty, and then uh, we had a couple <laughs> show up that we weren't we weren't aware of. So, uh, well, hey, it is what it is. Yep. <laughs> well, to those of you who did attend, and we had folks who came from, I'll check my memory here: Florida, Pennsylvania, Iowa. Oklahoma, obviously Texas, um, Montana, Washington, California, Washington, Montana, Montana. Yeah. yeah. Um, great. It, it was a great, great turnout of fantastic mm-hmm. people. And then many of us gathered um, at the Whitman's house. They hosted an event later that evening. And mm-hmm. man, the spread of food, and we got to celebrate three birthdays, including Mike Everett's during that event. Oh, mm-hmm. man. It was a great, great time. So everybody out there who was at the event, thank you for coming and really, really making it such a, a great experience for us because <laughs> that's what it's yeah. all about, right? It's all yeah. about us. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So fun, so fun. It always cracks me up. You know, you're standing up there presenting and and you know, like if there were little little word bubbles that popped up with people's IQs, I feel like everybody in the audience would have had higher IQs than us who were teaching. <laughs> this was a sharp, sharp group. Very sharp. Yeah, they um, were. <clears throat> okay. So this was actually a question, Mike Crawford, that you captured from the boot camp mm-hmm. um, that we thought would be really interesting to dig into into our podcast, especially for people who are not able to attend uh, yeah. the live boot camp. And, and one way to phrase it is, do you have to use whole life insurance to implement IBC? Right. Another way to phrase that is just hypothetically, if whole life insurance didn't exist, right? If it never had been invented, you know, 260 right. years ago or mm-hmm. whatever, if it didn't exist, could you still implement the concept of infinite banking? And I think that's a really fascinating question to ask, yeah. right? Because it does exist and you have lots of people out there that are teaching lots of variations of infinite banking. We have to be rather truists or purists um, that stick to Nelson's teachings. Um, But when, when you hear that question of, do you have to use whole life insurance to implement (laughs) IBC? What, what thoughts come up for you? Well, (laughs) You don't want to talk to the guy who is the ultimate purist of IBC. <laughs> Cause well, I, I, this is really just a thought, thought yeah. exercise though. Right. <laughs> right. I think, it's so not I think whether it's, it's right or wrong. It. It, it, it's a thought exercise. Yeah. 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 I, I think you could use just about anything actually to do IBC. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's just that all of the, the features of what you want to do with the infinite banking concept <laughs> are embodied in the whole life insurance contract. Yes. And actually, but could, you, yeah, go you ahead. You said contract, and that was the word that I was going to use that you don't have with any other mainstream product, you know, um, that you might use. I mean, even a savings account, which was one that was brought up during the boot camp, um, mm-hmm. you know, even if you were earning four to 6% on that savings account, right? And all the roses are, all the things are lined up in in perfect order and you can, and you use it just like you would your infinite banking system. You're missing out on two key factors, right? A, it's not in your control Mm -hmm. and B, you interrupt the eighth wonder of the world, compounding interest. interest. So you're, you know, 
you're giving up something just to use that tool. Mm -hmm. Let's just brainstorm just for fun. What if whole life insurance didn't exist and you wanted to implement IBC? And first yeah. of all, Mike Everett, can you can you capture for us first Nelson's principles? So we're thinking about Nelson's principles as we go through this thought exercise. All right. So what's the first one? Think long term. Yeah. You've got to think generationally. You've got to think about your family if you're doing IBC, number one. Number two, you've got to capitalize generously. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that's the problem with most business owners. They don't capitalize their business enough and they wonder why two years, four years down the road, it, it, it implodes. So you got to think long term, capitalize generously. Number three, you can't steal from yourself. If you use if you use your system to either pay down debt or go on vacation or uh, buy inventory for your business, you've got to replenish whatever you used out of your system. Got to be an honest banker. Honest yeah, banker. don't steal. Don't steal. Quit doing business with banks and rethink your thinking. So mm -hmm. those are in play all the time. Okay, so with that, that groundwork laid for us, like that is the concept. So we're going to stay true to the concept. But in any of that that you just said, Mike Everett, does it ever say whole life insurance? It does not. Oh, that's interesting. Mm. So if there was never whole life insurance as, as a vehicle, let's just brainstorm. What are some potential vehicles that could be used, right? Savings account could be used. Yep. Can you yep. capital? Can you capitalize a savings account? Yeah. Right? Can you borrow? Can you? I mean, you don't borrow from it, but you take with you, you withdraw yeah, from you, it. You withdraw. Right? But you can be an honest banker, and you can make payments back to it. So a savings yeah. account could be used. What other ideas come to mind for you guys? Four hundred one k. Anybody ever take a loan against their four hundred one k? Yeah, absolutely. So when you take a loan from your four hundred one k, what are the what are the terms involved with that? Right. Yeah. There's a yeah, lot. Well, so, I mean, each is different, you know, but I think the, the long and short of it is, is that you're going to be charged an interest just like you would with any other loan, including mm -hmm. prepaid interest on the life insurance policy to kind of circle that back in. But yeah. also you're going to you're going to be required to make payments. <laughs> yeah, that's required is the key and, word. And those there. payments are withdrawn from your paycheck. That is correct. That's right. Yeah. So, so so well, you, and you, then you don't also have a lot of control in do, that situation. You can only do one loan at a time. Yeah. Sometimes two. I've seen two. But, yeah, but well, no in more. most cases, one or two. Yeah. 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 So <clears throat> the bulk of that first loan has to be paid back before right. they'll consolidate and do another one. Right. And I think it's it's in most cases what I've seen is that you can borrow up to 50% of your contributions to your 401k right yeah yeah okay so, so there's just a lot of limitations <clears throat> mm -hmm. yeah 401k is a, an option what other ideas come to mind well I home mean, equity it, line of credit yeah yeah you could uh use a cd just like in the book yeah yeah i mean you could use a cd as collateral mm -hmm. and and yeah. work it that way we had well, a uh, lines participant. Of credit. Yep. In in uh in the we're probably going the same place, Crawford. Yep. Go ahead. No, uh, just he he had suggested what if you used a portfolio line of credit, mm -hmm. um, mm. and you know, we aren't necessarily versed in that stuff. We say it all the time. We're not series licensed. We don't want to be. Um, but what quick research showed is that they can be highly burdened with um, like interest rates. Um, they're not prepaid interest rates, they're compound interest rates. And then the other thing was, is that they have uh, strict uh, guidelines surrounding mm -hmm. how they are um, not used, but how they are um, taken, how you get access to them. It's not a simple form, right? You gotta basically, you know, jump through a few hoops in order to um, leverage it. Yeah. So then there's the whole 
um, which if people do their YouTube searches for IVC, at some point you're going to stumble across options like a, variations of universal life, which Nelson talks about in his book, mm -hmm. variable universal life, um, index universal life, all these variations of universal life, which Mike, Mike Everett, you do a great job of explaining what is universal life and why is it different than whole life insurance? But it could be used, again, for this thought exercise, yeah, yeah. used for infinite banking. Explain a little bit about what universal life insurance is. Well, believe it or not, I was in the life insurance business when universal life came on the scene. And uh, really what they did was they, they tried to unbundle the whole life insurance product by creating basically the the universal life you take a term life product and it's an annual renewable term it's not like a five a 10 a 15 or 20 year term life it's an annual renewable term and then what they did was you got to buy the life insurance but then they unbundled it and made an investment bag where they tried to put these two together and it's like oil and water mixed mm. together is really what it is. Yeah. But the bottom line is if in that term life insurance product, which is an annual renewable term, as you and I get older, the cost of the insurance goes up. Yeah. But then, you know, it was sold as a thing, you know, way back when, and I'm going to, I'm going to really date myself. Interest rates were 12 to 14% on savings accounts. Hmm. I don't even know if Crawford was born. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that was the early eighties. I was around. I was around. Okay. Sorry. Sorry. I've been too. <laughs> he was biting so, somebody's kneecaps. Yeah. So the, the crazy thing was you could show a, a UL product putting mm -hmm. like 25 to $35 a month. And when you were 65 years old, You'd have like three point five million dollars or more because they showed, mm -hmm. you know, they showed these numbers that by the time you got to your mid 50s, it, the number was crazy. But by the time you got to your 60s, it was like, holy cow, I'm retiring yeah. on my twenty five to thirty five dollar a month contribution. But as you and I know, as Nelson has stated, interest rates are up, interest rates are down. But the whole process of banking goes on. So what ends up happening is as the cost of the term goes up and you're only making a minimum contribution to your UL or IUL or VUL product, they're dragging the cost of the term life insurance that's getting more expensive right out of that bag of investment money. Yeah. And so it's cannibalizing the investment. Oh, the, the, just, the, the ever increasing annual increase of term life insurance as we get older, which that's a guaranteed, right? Yep is cannibalizing the investment part if it, it can keep up as long as those interest rates can were above you know the the, the increasing yeah. cost of the of the term life insurance well even you know i was reading the paper this morning and uh one of the local banks is given 5.35 on a 12 month cd yeah now let me tell you what they're they're wanting a whole lot of new customers, by the way. With the, it's a yeah. teaser rate. It's nothing but a teaser rate, and so I think that this is me now being one hundred percent skeptical of the system. <laughs> so I apologize to any financial representatives <laughs> that are listening <laughs> to this right now. I personally think when Universal Life was created, it was created with the idea to bring in a whole lot of customers mm. and that that whole word you used is cannibalizing the policy or the, uh, uh, the product. I think that they knew somewhere down the road, 55, 65 for sure, 70 years old, that this thing would implode. Mm -hmm. Now, hard to say for me to say that when I when I'm not sitting in you know an actuary's desk or a yeah. salesperson at the insurance company's desk because I think that we all have great big ideas on how things work mm -hmm. and you know when when interest rates are you know I want to just say anywhere from five to ten percent you can really make these things look very very attractive. Mm -hmm. But 
the reality is it's life insurance (laughs) and the cost of it with the universal IUL or VUL, the cost of the life insurance piece will go up. So I just don't think it's a long term. Ooh, think long term. It's not a long term uh, solution. solution. Yeah, I think the more I think about, you know, being a salesperson. I know we aren't really salespeople; we're coaches. You know, um, right? But when you look at these insurance companies, they all want to make money, right? They, it. They're Unfortunately, we, and we've said this in front of, or you have anyway, in front of representatives from insurance companies at our boot camp, <laughs> they don't care about you. Right? Yeah. Like we, we've said that. And, and in, in a lot of ways, it's unfortunately true. And so when they created these things, you know, especially in the 70s, 80s, when those interest rates were as high as they were, they were looking to grab a dollar. And I don't mean Boy, to howdy. throw them under the bus like that, but honestly, like, it's a business proposition. They're seeing it yeah. from a numbers and cents thing. It's not, again, like you said, you're not sitting in the actuarial's number in the seat and you're not seeing all the projections at that time. Did they know that interest rates would plummet or nearly go to zero for 20 years? No, they mm-hmm. didn't, you know? And mm-hmm. so, you know, at the time, you know, best laid intentions, so to speak. And I'm not saying that they were altruistic in the whole thing, but I think that they were looking at it from an opportunity perspective as well as in capturing the moment perspective we could we could take universal life out of the conversation right now and we could mm-hmm. insert 401ks 403bs as well sure. and we could mm-hmm. be having the exact same conversation yeah exactly right it is because none of these have guarantees none nope. of them well and the and, rules can and, change any time Mm -hmm. because all of these tax qualified plans came after the tax law. Yep. Right. Yep. And life insurance, whole life insurance predates the tax law. So it is not tied to all of those rules that those tax qualified plans play into really, as as I was listening to both of you talk, I was thinking, you know, if, if you were a life insurance person back in during that time period, when universal life was coming around and Dave Ramsey was teaching and he was saying, you know, he's famous for saying buy term and invest the rest. Well, a life insurance guy could be sitting on his back deck on a Sunday afternoon and go, huh, how could we create a product that says buy term and invest the rest? Oh, we're I had it. Universal life. <laughs> That's a really good point. I hadn't thought right? of that before. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, blind squirrels yeah. find nuts every once in a while too. Yeah. I say that a lot. Love it. Love it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So we've talked about some of these different um, products that could Uh be used for it. And and I'm very much reminded in hearing Nelson teach over the years that infinite banking, it's not called the infinite banking product. It is called the infinite (laughs) banking concept. IBC is a concept. It is not a product, Mm -hmm. Yes. right? As Mike Everett was talking about the principles, Nelson's principles of infinite banking, not once did he mention whole life insurance, not once, Uh -uh. right? It is simply that through Nelson Nash's personal experiences, if you haven't read Nelson's book, he talks about the, the life challenges that all happened, a series of life challenges that happened in his life all within a period of time. And he kind of fell into the idea of, controlling your own banking function, but that, oh, whole life insurance can actually work for that. Right. And if you redesign the structure of it to make it more cash value or equity focused mm-hmm. and de-emphasize the death benefit, it's actually an amazing tool for that. And so, Mike, Gary, have you turned to something you're wanting to bring into the conversation? Well, I'm, I'm thinking about page 26 where it says banking is a process, not a product. Mm, right. And, uh, you know, really, it's a, it's a matter of uh, you, you look at the big pool and we all have a pool of money. But where is our pool of money going? Yeah. It's going for mortgages. It's going for car loans. It's going for credit card debt, student loan debt. It's going for all the things that we spend our money on. But yet we're not creating anything where this pool will actually grow and compound in an income tax-free environment like IBC does through 
the whole life insurance product. Right. So, you know, Nelson said way, way long ago, and I I know we're supposed to wait more to the end, but this is like a perfect time. You know, Nelson said that the the whole life insurance product was misnamed. Mm -hmm. It should have been a, a... a banking system with a little life insurance thrown in on the side. A little death benefit, and, and yeah. I And I think about that all the time because what do we do? We teach the infinite banking concept. We show people how to create this pool of money and then deploy it in a number of different places, how they would choose to use it because number one, it's a contract. Number two, it's their money and it's their plan. So what we're doing is we're just kind of coming alongside them and helping them realize the potential of the process. Mm -hmm. That's it. So if we've said, yes, you could implement infinite banking using other kinds of tools, right? And where Nelson landed was on whole life insurance and he actually redesigned, structured how it was uh, designed. What are the key elements of a whole life insurance contract that make it so effective in your mind for in- implementing infinite banking? Hmm. Well, I'm the owner, first and foremost, right? You know, you, your name's first on the contract, right? It's absolutely first. There isn't a single other product that we've talked about today that you are number one. You might be listed on there as the owner <laughs> of your 401k policy. But at the top of that of that policy, it will it will give you verbiage that says, nah, you're not really the owner. We're just you're the you're the person that, you know, deposits money into this monthly or weekly. You know, that's kind of so, how I feel in my family. Like I'm a part of the family, but the kids and the dogs <laughs> and all the animals seem to rank higher than I do. <laughs> Isn't that the truth? <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. So yeah, owner so, would be my number. So number one, one is ownership, right? Uh, other elements that come to mind, uh, the fact that that when I take a loan against the policy, it's not actually from the policy. It is my policy is collateralized and I'm actually taking a loan from the company. And the fact that I this is the part that's so important. Well, there's two parts that are important to me. One, there is death benefit attached to so my yep. family is taken care of. And the second thing is, is the control and flexibility. I just had this conversation yesterday with a client that we were talking about who they need 20 grand to purchase a car for their kiddo who's getting ready to go to college. Oh, okay? man. And, and he was like, so if I take 20,000 from my car and do I have to like start making those payments right away? You do not, right? <laughs> you do not. You have flexibility. If you need to take a month off, two months off, a year off, mm-hmm. right? They may have some income changes in a positive way you know, six to nine months down the road, could they just not make loan repayments for that six to nine months? And when that windfall comes, then replenish the policy? Absolutely. So for me, it's the death benefit and then the the flexibility and control of the the process. Yeah, absolutely. Any other factors that come to mind for you guys? I like the simplicity (laughs) of it. I love the fact of the guarantees. Um, oh yeah, the guarantees are big for me, um, and and as our longtime <laughs> listeners know, you know, back in two thousand seven, two thousand eight, we had back in my principal days, we had teachers who were ready, who had told me they're going to retire at the end of this year, yep. in two thousand seven, two thousand eight, and then the market crashed. Yep. Mm. Timing is important. Do we think the market <laughs> over time is going to go up? Sure. Yeah, probably. But it's going to go up and down along the way. And the timing of when you need that money to be at the peak is really important. And for those people who are ready to retire, all of a sudden they couldn't because yeah. the crash happened at the time they they needed that money. Yeah. So the guarantees and not having the risk involved for me is super important. I think that second you know, the, other, there, the risk oh, is the thing that I would think about a lot. Yeah, yeah. that's right. You know, the other flip side is, you know, if you were going to go down to the bank or you were going to go borrow money out of your 401k, how much paperwork do you have to do? Uh, <laughs> that was another thing oh, I talked about yesterday with this. Oh, oh my gosh. Man. And then <laughs> with uh, with IBC, 
you fill out a one page form, you either email it or fax it directly to the company and three to five days later, if they have your banking information, the dollars that you have requested are sitting in your checking or savings account. It's you did not have to cut. Yeah, you didn't have to cut your wrist and bleed on the paper a little bit. <laughs> yes, it's just it so may, simple. It is. It's way too simple. Well, and with one but, of our companies now, you know, they really are trying to put things in place to make it yeah. really, really simple for because because let's be real. Life insurance companies are not online banking. They are they not, are not structured no. for online nope. banking. So there are some hoops that you got to jump through and people need to know that. Right. Yep. But one of the companies, as long as it is a, I believe, a $25,000 loan request or less, you can do it over yep. the phone. Just yep. call Isn't them. As long as they've crazy? got your banking information on file, <laughs> up to $25,000, awesome. you can make a phone call. I like that. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you like calling people. The simplicity I do. Is... <laughs> <laughs> Especially when you're tooling down the road at about 85 and that F-150. Oh, I got to buddy. call somebody. I need Unbelievable! To Somebody needs to hear someone. these golden this golden voice. <laughs> oh, Crawford, do you have something you're gonna throw in? No, there? I just think you know, you know, you add all the things up: the ownership, the simplicity, the the death benefit as this you know sidecar mm. that we get access to as the and asset. You know, you you start piling all these things up, and I know I missed a couple, but you you start piling these things up and the, you know, the scale, the teeter totter really starts to shift in favor of, you know, properly designed, dividend paying, whole life insurance. Gosh, it's just so yeah. simple. And, you, and a, even if you took yellow pad and put pros and cons, yeah, your pros on IBC and whole life mm -hmm. would just completely outweigh Absolutely. any other type product that you might want to utilize for IBC. Crawford, you just said it so well. I, you know, I keep this this LSL play sheet just to so that <laughs> always we're looking through this lens. I keep it yeah. right in front of my my keyboard, and yeah. I, and the one of the questions we have here we have you know why does LSL exist? You know yeah. what qualities do we look for in our yeah. team members and our clients? All that, but one of them is here is what business are we in? And this is this is how we stay in our lane. Yeah. It is clearly what you just said. It is teaching and coaching IBC using properly designed traditional whole life insurance. That Boom. is the business we're in. That is what we do. That's what we do. Yep. Good Incredible. stuff, guys. Fantastic. So mm. I think I'm going to go out and start doing IBC with my savings account and my 401k. <laughs> You've maybe shifted a, your mindset, a couple right? of ULs and... <laughs> Uh, probably not. <laughs> probably not. Probably uh, not going to happen. <clears throat> hey, thanks to everybody for listening in. Check us out at uh, lifesuccesslegacy.com, our website. Uh, we have, I know Cropper told me we're going to be releasing this today or tomorrow. <laughs> and, and this weekend, actually, Saturday morning, we've got a, a boot camp. Not this weekend, December December 2nd. 2nd. Right? December 2nd, we've got a boot camp. Uh, this will be a virtual one, a Zoom one. So uh, if you want to um, attend one of our boot camps, what we'd love for you to do is attend a webinar first. Yeah. That, Monday that the will, 20th. Yeah. Monday the 20th. That'll give you an introduction. It's about 80 minutes long of listening to Mike Everett's golden voice. He yeah. will summarize the uh, Nelson Nash's book and a few other key nuggets. But if you do that webinar, you will be primed very well to jump into that boot camp where it's a three hour deep dive into IBC. Um, and you can you can register for all of these events on our on our website at lifesuccesslegacy.com. We want to thank everybody for joining us. We mm. really, really appreciate and especially those folks who came down to Houston for the live boot camp. Mm. We had a blast. So thank so you for joining us. Guys, thanks for jumping in today. This has been fantastic. Everybody have a great day.